And welcome back to Central Valley Talk, where we celebrate what's good about Fresno. There's so many wonderful things going on in here in our community, and we want to spotlight them and let them know, uh, let the city know what's going on that we may not know much about. Um, our guest today is Joyce Eden from Medical Mist. <laughs> Mysteries. mysteries no, yes, medical ministry. It is a mystery. The Lord works in very mysterious ways. <laughs> uh, medical Ministries International. By the way, it's medministries.org. It's on the screen, medministries.org. We discovered that you guys are doing something in downtown Fresno yes. that's affecting the world. Yes. Tell us what you're doing right now. So the fun thing about Medical Ministries International is it was founded in 1998 by Nancy and Tom Stokel. Mm -hmm. um, you can go right there to that website and uh, do some look up on us because I want to tell stories today about right out of Fresno, California. We are the only repurposing of medical supplies and equipment on the west coast of uh, 501c3 Nature. So right here out of Fresno, um, and we did move to downtown 1501 Broadway in um, the early part of this year. So that's our main headquarters and our processing warehouse. So I'm gonna just try and show you a picture here. Um, this this will just give you a highlight. 90% of what we do is done by volunteers. Mm. So this is a picture of the warehouse where we have sorting tables because things come in boxes and bags. Sometimes they're labeled, but most of the boxes, that's not what's really in them. It takes these volunteers to do that. And um, on the website, again, you can see our volunteer days, but please know you don't need to just sort supplies. You can build crates. You can um, stuff the 40-foot container full of the boxes and equipment. You can do maintenance on the truck. You can do handyman work. It takes a whole village to work globally. Um, and Mike, may I share some stories? Please do, I love okay, this Okay, so since I was here last, we've had several partial shipments. Um, so if you happen to be going on any type of medical ministry trip and you do an application through the website, we'll fill a suitcase. Um, if you can take boxes, if you can take pallets, we're happy to talk to you about that and review it. Um, so a partial shipment went to Sierra Leone mm -hmm. um, in the last little bit. Is it and on the west coast of Africa? Sierra Leone is west coast. It happened to have been a French colony, so they're French speaking there. Um, but this is baby Hawa, oh. and baby Hawa came in very dehydrated. And in third world countries, dehydration is one of the top reasons that infants and toddlers die because they cannot tolerate it. So when, when baby Hawa arrived at this pop-up clinic, um, if they had not had IV tubing, and if they had not had this baby scale because babies and infants need to be treated by their weight, then they would not have been adequately able to treat her. But she recovered within the day because what she needed was hydration. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, she needed to um, have some additional treatment because there's a lot of parasite issues that cause um, tr uh, problems with digestion. So, But she got what she needed that day because we had an opportunity to send a partial shipment. I'm gonna show you this young lady, very dramatic. So when you look at her ear, these are keloid scars that are hanging off of her ear. Can you imagine as a teenager walking around with this? So for the sake of some very simple surgical tools, um, this could be an outpatient surgery for her and then antibiotics to treat her to get the infection under control. That young woman gets a, a whole new life. So any of you who have teenagers, um, that live with you or that you're exposed to, you know how dramatic that can be. So we, we felt very grateful we could help um, send a partial shipment to the team there in Sierra Leone. And then um, just a few weeks ago, we did our first shipment to Mongolia. So if you, you all have your cell phones, you Google it, it's right yeah. next to China. It is um, inland, it has no river, no ports. Um, so getting supplies to them is a very challenging need. Um, they, uh, the majority of their population lives below the poverty line for Mongolia, and they only produce 2% of the medical supplies that they need to service their, their um, patients there in the country. So we were so excited to send a 40-foot container of equipment and supplies off to Mongolia. And in a, by the end of December, we will be shipping off to um, con the Congo, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So we're currently working on that. Great. It's really becoming a global, uh, global issue. Uh, you're reaching out to the whole globe. Used to be places just seem so distant, so far away, but they're all coming closer to us now. Yes, and and um, 
if I could do a shout out for us Please. as Fresno, we are one of the most diverse cities in the whole United States of America. So right here in Fresno, we have at least 82 cultures, 100 and something languages. And um, I look for opportunity because I was born and raised on the west coast of Africa. So I look for opportunities to network within our community. And the other thing I would like to call out um, that we've been supported on this year is we have medical schools, nursing schools, medical assistant, respiratory. We have a lot of healthcare careers uh, programs here in the Valley. And um, the same effort of keeping medical equipment and supplies out of our uh, landfill, we, we try not to do that with things that expire for us. So uh, we have currently expanded in providing expired items to all of our healthcare careers programs so that the students can have hands-on experiences with a lot of the supplies and not just look at them or talk about them. So that's been an expansion of our local health that we've been doing in the past year along with our global health. Let's talk about, and let's pretend the first time you're here, let's talk about, you said, your repurpose medical supplies. What could that possibly mean? Yes. You're not like washing out a thing and using it again. Okay, so where we get things from, it originally started with all of the hospitals, and, and we could not do it without them. But in today's world, over the 24 years of our existence, um, home health, hospice, individuals we here in america can go right down to cvs walgreens whatever drugstore you can uh, get bandage supplies you can get thermometers um, so we we need everything from thermometers to two by twos um, and the equipment that comes out of the hospitals and even from home you might have a blood pressure cuff machine that you were using because you had um, a high blood pressure incident and now it's under control with medications so um, please know we take everything but medication and fluids, those are very difficult for the type of uh, nonprofit we are to ship. But anything else, just call us. The number's on the screen, 324-1255. We'll screen out what you'd like to, to bring and donate to us. And there's very little that we can't take and repurpose to another country. And the prompt I'm trying to deliver it to you is that hospitals have to dispose of stuff, even though it's not used, Correct. even though it's sealed in the package. Yes. And they are required not to use it again. I, I, I shouldn't try to explain it oh, for you. No, no. Uh, thank you, Mike, because yeah. actually uh, what that validates is that um, all of you are ambassadors. Now that you've heard this here in the Central Valley, right here on this talk show, you can now tell your neighbors, you can tell your friends, you can, you can overhear somebody saying, um, you know, my loved one passed away and I don't know what to do with their supplies. Right. You can say, hey, I heard about this place, Medical Ministries International, because you can drop off or if your items are large enough that we need to come get them, we do have a box truck and we'll come get them. So um, in, in the blessing of living in the United States of America, um, one of the, the things that goes on is there's a lot of regulatory compliance. So for example, if an operation was scheduled and the person gets in there and their surgery was underneath their arm pit and they had a pimple under their arm, that surgery is going to get canceled because nobody's going to risk an infection for that patient. But everything that was brought into that room, whether it was opened or not, now has to be discarded. So like Mike was explaining, it, um, and in the hospitals, they might have had a surgical kit for um, say a hernia operation, uh, but if that got canceled, all of those bandages, all of those supplies, everything associated with it, um, they would just throw it in a box or a bag and get it to the donation shelf in their central distribution, and then we periodically go and get that. Same thing happens at home though, right? Um, somebody called me the other day and said, we don't know how this happened, um, but we have four thermometers here at home. Would you like them? And I said, I know how it happened. There was this thing called the pandemic, mm -hmm. and you had to check your temperature before you went into work every day. Yep. And they started laughing and said yes. So please know that, that we are happy to take um, all kinds of things. Just give us a call, and we're happy to screen that for you. Okay, so part of it is procuring this stuff, which is pretty much through donations. Yes. Uh, a lot of hospitals give. Uh, the local hospitals, are you reaching out to out of the area hospitals? In, in um, So one of the things for those, those of you who, um, who are looking for ways to be prayerful, 
Um, the pandemic affected our hospitals so significantly that they had to open COVID units, they had to hang on to supplies, supply chain challenges. So um, we, we are now needing to look at how we do things. Everything historically has been donated, um, but we've expanded networking and connectivity to other um, supply houses across the U.S. So that is a new opportunity if people are willing to consider that, that if I get a notice, say, from somewhere back east um, that they have uh, two anesthesia machines that came in, if, if I just pay the shipping, I can have them. We are having to look differently at how, how we're resourcing the requests that are coming in. Um, so even though the majority of the hospital urgent care type of equipment comes in from the hospitals, um, we, we are now really needing to be creative about how we look at that. And a shout out to the doctor's offices. Mm -hmm. If any of you work in a doctor's office, um, they don't know they're somewhere that those things can go. So I actually have people that call me and say, we just drove by um, the dumpster at such and such an address. It looks like the doctor's either closing or getting rid of things. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as long as things are still clean and packaged in, in, in boxes, uh, we, we are happy to take them. So we appreciate that. That's the front part, procuring. Yes. I want to talk about the next part. You put the stuff that you procure into a, what do you call it, a container? A container, or it could container. be a box, or a okay. suitcase, or a pallet. But often you're shipping an entire container across the ocean yes. to some place. That's got to be expensive. It is. So in today's world, um, the 40-foot sea containers that we get, um, it's now an average of fifteen to $20,000 to get that to its receiver, to the applicant. Um, a pallet is about $600 to process, and that has about 12 boxes on it. And if you break down what it would cost to fill a box and, and get it ready to go, it's about $50. $50. So if you want to break it down in, into um, any amount helps. We, we live in a, in a world where part of the excitement of it, it is that when we don't think something's going to happen, uh, it does. So uh, God does work in mysterious ways still yep. in today's world. So uh, we are constantly um, blessed and amazed at, at whether it's financial or time. Um, I, I recently have had some volunteers who are in the medical field um, and some that are engineers. And, and there are all kinds of things that need to happen to keep the offices going and to make things happen. And then people who have worked or lived internationally, they understand what it is that it takes to get all the paperwork, um, the shipping, the communication done. Um, and, and then once it gets to port, it has to get out of port. So really supporting the people on the other end, it, it does take a lot. And that's where a lot of that goes funding this. Yeah. funding goes in. So from the point of application to arrival um, to the applicant, it is taking approximately six to 12 months. Mm -hmm. So it's not a fast process unless somebody can hand carry. So if somebody's physically going, so like the partial shipment I mentioned about for Sierra Leone, we shipped those pallets um, to the uh, nurse practitioner that runs that clinic in Sierra Leone, and then members going on that trip spread it amongst their suitcases, and they did pay for a few contain um, boxes to be boxes shipped. Boxes to take with yes. them, yeah. Shipping charge, so sh to ship a container could be $20,000. Yes. But you don't just ship it and you're done. There has to be a receiver, somebody getting the paperwork, getting through customs, or wh yes. whatever those things, things we're not even thinking about. Yes. So. And if there's any physicians listening to me, um, we highly value those of you who have a heart for this kind of humanitarian service because we do need physician liaisons and uh, quality folks that do that. And I, if I could just do a shout out to Dr. Jay Kashigian, um, he, he not only helps us with that side of it, he also goes to Lebanon and Armenia uh, mm -hmm. frequently. So um, we, we have built relationships in some countries where we've been shipping to now for up to 18 years. So every few years they save up and work with us and we're able to send, send another shipment in. And if you go to the website, we actually are now starting to reinstitute our own clinic trips. So you'll see a request there if you're interested in going to Fiji uh, next end of July, early August. We're taking people that are interested and we also has, have a history of uh, building buildings. So mm. we have a history of doing construction as well. Got to build the clinics as well. We'll build the building and build then we'll the equip it. Build the clinic with supplies. 
Yes. There's a lot to this. There's Who a many knew this is going on from right here in Fresno? Right here in Fresno. And we're going to celebrate what's good about Fresno. And Joyce yes. Eden is, Medical Ministries International is. And uh, uh, let's, I want to just touch back on if you're a, a doctor and you're going to go do a trip, a uh, mission trip. Yes. Go to a clinic in another country. You guys want them. So they can today. go to the website, the www.medministries.org. And on there is an application section. And if you're going on a trip of your own and you only need a few supplies, then, then your application there would be um, the hand carry or partial shipment. And you could request from us, like for example, bandages, IV supplies for starting, not the fluids. Um, but if you uh, would like to exercise an opportunity for that, that's right there on the website as well as then of course the larger shipments. Amazing, the opportunities are being created to serve right here, starting with you guys. Yes. Um, now, the shipping containers don't fill themselves. They don't. Need volunteers. The yes. shipping, I call it shipping charges, $20,000. That money's got to come from someplace. Yes. So part of it is procuring the, the medical supplies, coming up with the cost to move it from one place to another. Yes. And so it takes people, it takes money. Yes. The value that's being shipped. So if you, if you do consider doing a financial donation to us or even a time donation of volunteering, um, the value ranges from four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars per forty foot container between the equipment and supplies that we put in. Wow, that adds up now. That you could spend twenty thousand, but you're shipping like a half a million dollars worth of supplies to another yes. country. Yes, return on investment is great. Joyce Eden is one of my favorite um, guests because every time I learn something new about what they're doing, it's right here in downtown Fresno. Yes. And I appreciate Come for a tour. Yeah. We fly every flag of every country we've shipped to. We're up to 32 flags. 32 flags. 32 countries. And let me ask this. It popped in my head, but it's your interview, so I like to talk about what you want to talk about. But what if somebody's going on a, a, a mission, not a medical mission, just a mission of service to build buildings or something? Would they want to carry some medical supplies? Uh, Again, I am happy to talk to anybody about opportunity. So if it's a humanitarian trip to help build, if there happens to be clinic around and there's a uh, some type of clinical person I can connect with and a suitcase full of supplies would be helpful, um, I am willing to be creative and consider yeah. consider all kinds of conversations. So again, like I emphasized before, we, we are very diverse in this community in Fresno County. So I know there are a lot of people donating time and, and talent around um, not only the healthcare, but construction. So, so um, I'm happy to come and make a visit to where you are, or you can come and tour the warehouse at 1501 Broadway. Just give me a call and I'm happy to take you through because a picture really is worth a thousand words. I'm inspired as always. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Uh, thanks to Medical Ministries International. I know there's a bunch of people over there doing the it's work. It's a huge so, team. Yes. We uh, will be back with more Cinder Valley Talk. Uh, we're going to have Joyce back every month or two, as often as we could get her here, and because uh, uh, we like to talk about this stuff, because it's very important. We'll be back with more Cinder Valley Talk right after this.